welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're watching this video, I'm guessing you either want to start an embroidery business as a side hustle or for it to eventually replace your full-time job. In 2016, I purchased my first embroidery machine with the view of making patches to earn some extra income alongside my full-time job. That side hustle very quickly overtook my life and eventually I quit my full-time job and now I work from home full-time. So in this video, my aim is to share with you some tips on how to start up your embroidery business with no experience like I did. I'd just give you a little bit of background of how I got into embroidery. I happened to see somebody else making embroidery patches and I thought, oh, maybe I could do that as well. So no experience. I just went online and purchased the cheapest embroidery machine I could find. Um, I have put, already done a video on choosing your first embroidery machine. I'll leave the link to that down in the description below. Um, I do regret buying the cheapest embroidery machine on the market and there's more information about that in the video linked in the description. But the embroidery machine arrived and then I started wondering, great, I've got the tool, now what do I do next? And that's where this video sort of falls in. Um, this video is kind of assuming you've either already purchased your embroidery machine or you're just about to do so and now you're wondering what to do when the machine arrives. Well, first up, as a beginner, you're going to have a lot to learn. So the best thing you can do is use your embroidery machine for anything and everything. It doesn't just have to be business related. And one of the things I resisted doing when I first received my machine, uh, whether it's because I was too stubborn or because I was a little bit scared is I wish I had made more gifts for people. At the time, I wasn't sure if I wanted to give out things for free because I didn't want to work for nothing. And also I was equally scared that the work I was producing wasn't to a high enough standard. Later on, I realized that making gifts, no matter how silly, it was all good practice. And as I learned from my mistakes, I would improve. If you include business cards with your gifts, it also gives your family and friends the opportunity to spread the word about your services. Word does travel quickly and those free gifts may well pay for themselves as new customers approach you for work and are willing to pay for your service. You also might want to decide whether or not it is helpful for you to learn how to digitize. Digitizing is the act of turning an image into an embroidery file and it can represent another significant investment in your business. But if you want to create lots of your own original designs, then it might be worth looking into. You can always pay somebody to digitize for you, but then you should remember that you need to incorporate the cost of digitizing into your product fees. If you'd like to learn more on digitizing, then I have also done a video on this and I will leave the link to that down in the description below as well. You'll need to establish how long it takes for your products to make from start to finish, and then you can start seeking out tools to help you reduce those production times. The shorter your production times are, the greater your profit is. An example of this in my own business would be when I purchased the Hoopmaster to help me uh, hoop up uh, t-shirts and garments. Before I purchased this product, I used to hoop my garments by lying them out on a flat surface and then eyeballing where to place the hoop. This used to take a while and I felt like I was constantly re-hooping garments to ensure that they were straight. With the Hoop Master, it meant that I could cut the time I spent hooping garments in half and get to embroidering on the garments quicker. Everything in business becomes about cutting your overheads and increasing your profits. I bulk buy whatever I can, as it usually means I can get a better price for the same product. And in order to source bulk buys and wholesales, it's a good idea to attend some trade shows in your area. At these shows, you can source quality materials without having to buy blind online. You can actually physically see the products and decide what is good for you and your business. Then once you've sourced your materials, you need to establish your pricing. How you price your product will determine whether or not your business is viable. While it's important to look at the competition and see what they are charging, you might find some competitors are charging so little 
that you can't compete with it and you worry that everyone will just buy the cheaper competitive product. While that is a concern, your own personal spin and marketing is what sells your product and you shouldn't undercharge just because somebody else is. You have to remember to factor in the time it takes you to make and pack and ship the product as well as the cost of the materials to make it. It's often overlooked in postage, for example. You might think that when you're charging a customer for postage, you just include the price of posting the item, but it's not. It's postage and packing. When establishing how much it costs to dispatch an item, you need to establish how much you're spending on packing materials as well as your time it takes to pack and dispatch that order. And these things need to be factored in as an expense too. Then you need to decide where you're going to be selling your products. Are you going to be selling them exclusively in person, like for example at market shows when perhaps your only overhead is the cost of the table? Or more likely, you're going to sell these products online on platforms such as uh, Etsy, not on the high street and eBay. On these platforms, they do require you to create a listing. And in that listing, there are some important things you should include, such as your production times, the materials you use to make the product, how to use the product, and then the delivery time. If you have a production time and a delivery time, it's important to express to the customer that these are two different things. For example, my production time is usually three to five days. And then if the item is being delivered to an address in the UK, then usually there is a one to three day delivery time on top of that. So at most, the product should take about eight or 10 days to reach the customer. And then when I was started up my business, I left the really fun thing. Well, what I consider to be the really fun thing, your branding. I left that until last because it always gave me something to look forward to. When you're doing your branding, you can really feel all the elements of your business starting to pull together into something cohesive. Your branding includes things such as your logo and your product photos and all of the fun social media content you get to create. It lets you express how you want the general public to see your business and it gives you an opportunity to be really creative and show off all of the products that you're proud to offer. And then last of all is the dreaded tax. I'm not going to talk much about tax because I don't know enough about it. But when I was starting my business, I was really surprised at how quickly I hit the threshold on what you have to register to be a sole trader, at least in the United Kingdom. Uh, in the UK, as soon as you turn over a thousand pounds, that's not profit, that's just your take-ins. As soon as you turn over one thousand pounds, you have to register with HMRC. There are other companies out there, such as the Job Centre and just the government website that can give you more information on this. But it's something that you should be aware of because it really shocked me when it happened. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I try to keep it short and sweet. If you have any further questions or comments, please leave them down in the description below. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and gave it a like as it does help my channel grow and motivates me to continue making videos like this. So thanks again for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye bye.